Hey, what's up guys? It's Pedro here from NewCoder.com. And in this tutorial, we are going to be going over embedding expressions within JSX. So the whole point of embedding expressions within JSX is to make our components more dynamic. All right, so from here, let's pick a JSX element. Could be any one of these. So we'll go with the H3 tag and we're going to remove the text. And within here, we could use curly braces. This symbolizes to react that you want to put an expression here. And for this example, let's go ahead and use a JavaScript expression. So we're going to do a little bit of math. So we're just going to say one plus one. And what this is going to do is within these curly braces is going to see that you want this interpreted as JavaScript and not text. So one plus one is going to get evaluated into two. So let's go ahead and save this. Let's bring up our web page and you can see here we have app component and our H3 tag is outputted with two. So let's go back to our example and these curly braces are important. So let us show you the result without them. So if I was just to copy that and take out these braces, this is going to be interpreted as text. Okay. So if I save this, bring back the web page, you see that we get one plus one. So you must use the curly braces if you want to use JavaScript within JSX. So now let's give another example. You don't have to use a number literals. You could use variables. So let's say outside of this return statement, I could come up here and we could declare two variables. So I'll say num1 is equal to one and num2 is equal to two. And we could just go ahead and replace this here. So if I save this, bring up the web page, you can see now that we are getting three. And I should probably make this bigger because it's kind of small. Save this and there you go. So we get three. So you could pretend that these user variables are storing user input. So that's how you would use them. Now you're not limited to only numbers. You could put any type of single lined JavaScript expressions. So let's say I want to do some string concatenation. So let's say that I want to say Pedro and I could say one, two, three, for example, if I save this, go back to the web page. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. So I could output strings using this method. So let's give one more example. Let's say that I want to output the date. So I could use the date object. I could say new date dot to locale string. We could execute that and this is going to return a string representation. Let's go ahead and save that. Bring up the web page and we got a little error and that is because we should probably invoke that. So go ahead and save that error should be gone. And here we go. So we know we can output strings using this method. Now we cannot define like functions within here. We can't define a class. We can't use for loop statements, if statements, stuff like that, only expressions. But what we can do is invoke functions within here. So let's say that instead of doing our math within here, we could define a function. So I could come up here and we'll call this function add. We'll have num1, num2 as parameters. And we are just gonna return the sum of it. Okay, now within here, in order to access this add method, we have to use the this keyword. So we'll say this.add and we'll pass in one plus one as arguments. So let's go ahead and save this. Let's bring up the web page and you see that we get two. So you can invoke functions within here, but you cannot declare functions within here. All right, so now let us try to output a object. So let's go ahead and create an object. So we'll say cons some object and we will set this to name of Pedro. 
And he'll also have an age of 500. So now, if I just try to copy this and put this within here, you'll see that we will get an error. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And it says objects are not valid as a React child found object with keys. So in order to output this, we are just going to have to access the properties within this object. So let me go back and instead we could say, my name is, and we could say some object dot name. And remember, since we're within these curly braces, this is going to be interpreted as JavaScript. So this is going to output the name and I can say my age is, we could do another curly braces here and let me fix that. And within here, I could say some object dot age. So if I save this, bring up the web page, you can see that we get my name is Pedro, my age is 500. So if you're trying to output an object, you have to go through the properties. You just can't output the whole object. Now, you're not limited to only JavaScript expressions. You can also use JSX expressions. So let us give an example. Let's call a function some JSX. And this is going to return JSX. So let us give an unordered list. Let's give three list items. And we'll say one, two, and three. And from here, we can output this by invoking this function. So we use the this keyword and we called it some JSX. So we need to invoke it. We save it. And you see that our list gets rendered. Okay, so this works because like I said in the previous tutorial, JSX is just syntactic sugar. It is ultimately JavaScript. So that's why this works. Next, let's go into conditionals. Earlier, I said that you cannot use an if statement, but what you can do is use a ternary operator. So for example, I could say if three is greater than two, what I can do is render out this string. So I could say three is bigger than two, or it's not. So if I save this, bring up the web page, you can see three is bigger than two. That is because this condition evaluates the true. So it executes this code here. Three is bigger than two. So you can use ternary operators. You just can't use an if statement. And by the way, this will work with JSX as well. So if you want to have a little H1 tag here and you can say three bigger than two, let's go ahead and save this. And you can see that we get the output of three is bigger than two. Okay, so you can output a JSX expression from this ternary operation, okay? All right, so let us continue working with conditionals. Let's say that I wanna conditionally render a JSX element. So for example, I could say if something is true and the thing that I want to render. So I could say H1 thing I want to render. Then our H1 tag will be rendered. So if I save this and let's go ahead and go to our web page, you can see here, thing I want to render gets rendered out. If I set this to false, let's go ahead and save this, bring up the page. You can see that it does not get rendered. Another way you could go about conditional rendering is by functions. So let's say you don't like this inline style of conditionals, right? You don't like ternary operators. You don't like having the true and false and statements. So let's say that I just declare a function here and we'll say conditional render. And I could say if one is greater than zero, 
let us render this JSX. So we'll say one is greater than zero. Or if that is not true, which obviously our else statement is never going to run, but this is how you would do conditional rendering. You can say h1, one is less than zero. So now if I save this, same exact thing as you've been doing, come down here. We have to use the this keyword. So this dot conditional render. Let's go ahead and invoke that. Let's save it, bring it up. And you see that we get one is greater than zero. So that is pretty much conditional rendering. Let us talk about outputting arrays. So we actually have an example here. So instead of listing all this out like so, let's declare an array here. So we'll just say const sum array. And what we can do is put these li expressions within this array. So I could say li and I could say one. Let's go ahead and copy this. We'll make this two and we'll make this three. And now instead of having this here, I could output this using the curly braces. So I could say sum array. And now if I save this and let's go ahead and just make another copy here. Let's call sum JSX. I believe that's what I called it. Yeah, sum JSX. Go ahead and save this and I can bring this up and you see that our list gets rendered out. So with arrays, React is smart enough to know that, hey, he has a bunch of JSX elements here. He wants us to output this for him. Okay, so this is only for arrays unlike let's say objects. Objects, you have to do it manually, but for arrays, React does the work for you. Now this will not only work for JSX expressions, but this will also work for numbers and strings. And the last couple of things that I would like to mention are that booleans, null, and undefined are ignored. So if I have these curly braces here and I just type true, this is gonna not render at all. So if I save this and let's go ahead and open up the browser, you see that nothing is being shown. And this would hold true for false, null, and undefined. And the absolute last thing that I wanna show you guys is how to comment something out. So let's say I don't want this H1 tag. I just click here, I hit control forward slash, and that will comment this out. So this H1 tag will be shown. So if I save this, go back to the web page, and you see that the H tag with app component is no longer here. So this is pretty much all I wanted to cover within this tutorial, and I'll see you guys in the next one.